That's it. So to get the water in, we have to make sure it's in that position there. Yeah. To drain it, it's just, all you do is just lever it up. Yeah. And it'll drain the water out. Okay, so we need it in that position, so it's horizontal, ready. That will allow the water to run around the system. Yeah. Without draining. Before, again, before you switch the water pump on, make sure all the taps are shut. And make sure the taps are in the correct position. You can see where that can go. Yeah. If you'd left that open and you switch the water pump on, you're going to have water where you don't want it. Yeah. Okay, especially all the floor and not, not very good with sculpted carpets. No. Do the same in your bathroom, make sure all the taps are correct and shut there as well. Yeah. And next thing is switch the water pump on. Okay, so I've just lit the control panel up again. Yeah. So that's water pump on now. So right. the next thing we need to do, if you drained everything uh, previous, uh, wherever you've been, it's going to be air in, that, in them pipes in that water tank. Yeah. Okay, so we need to get the water in from outside into the taps, into the water system. I have primed this already, just to make sure it's all up and running. So normally what I do, open it on the cold side of your tap. Yeah. What you'll see would be spluttering like mad to start because it's be pushing air out. Yeah. Okay. Once I've got a solid stream like that, what I then do is turn it across to the hot side. Yeah. Because what that is going to do is fill your hot water tank. Yeah. Okay, so you've got to imagine it's going to take a, a bit longer to get that through. Yeah. Because you've got 10 litres of air now instead of water at the moment. So it'll be pushing all that air out. Once yeah, you've got that's a solid hot, Yeah. <laughs> well, I have had all, it all up and running, that's why it's not instant heat. No. But once you've got a solid stream like that on the hot side, yeah. that means your hot water tank's full. Right. Okay, if it's still spluttering, just give it a bit longer just to get the, all the air out. Yeah. Okay. Do the same in each tap. Yeah. That'll make sure all the air's out. Okay. Okay. Happy with that bit? Yeah. Yeah. Just going back to the heating of water, which is the next thing we're going to do anyway. It's not instant heat. It no. will take at least half an hour probably to heat it up. Yeah, yeah. So it's a bit like immersion heater at home if you're using electric. Okay. So it's not instant heat. I've had it up and running, make sure everything's uh, okay. Yeah. Right. So we have a look in here, which is your consumer unit. So that is your water heater on electric. Yeah. That's your space heater, which is room heater. Yeah. Okay. So you can leave that one on. That's, yeah. that's no. That's not going to cause any problems. If you leave that one on, yeah, and there's no water in that tank, burn the elements out. It's like it's like uh, boiling a kettle with no water in it. Right. It you may be looking, and it's it's got a thermal switch in these, that it may tr just trip it. Mm. If you're lucky. If it, mm. obviously this being a second-hand van, you don't know who may have done that already, and it might just be at that critical point where it might just go. Yeah. But you might be lucky. So if you have done it not realising you drained it and you left that switched on because yeah. that's behind the cupboard. When you leave, yeah. that's quite easy to miss. So when you leave, switch it off. Yeah. So hopefully when you get to your next site, that won't, that won't be switched on. Yeah. Because as soon as you plug electric in and that's switched on, it will start eating that element. Yeah. So if you have done what, you, what I've just said is left it on with no water in it, what you can do is switch that off, pull your electric out, Give it a few seconds to reset, plug, plug it back in again, make sure there's water in it first, yeah. and then you can switch that on, it may reset. Yeah. So okay. You, so you can leave it on once your water's all full? Yeah, once the water's in there, yeah, you can leave that on. Yeah. Okay, I'll leave that off now. Yeah. So uh, if you do drain it on the way home, you know we've uh, switched it off. Yeah. Okay, so that's heating, on, heating your water on electric. Yeah. Okay, you can also heat it on gas. So if you, if you do damage the element, you've still got the gas option. Yeah. Okay, so this is the gas one. You see, you've got two controls that look very similar. Yeah. You see that ultra store? Yeah. Ultra heat. Yeah. Ultra store, storing your water. Yeah. Ultra heat, heater. Yeah. So for the, they're for two different things. Okay. Yeah. Turn the gas on for the water heating. All you do is turn the outer ring. Yeah. If you go click then. Yeah. Green light comes on. That's lit. Right. If it goes red, that's failed. Okay. So if it's failed, turn it off. Check the things as in you have turned your gas on, you have got gas, so you could fire your cook up just to make sure you have got gas, or the cover, which is outside on the boiler, you know, the boiler vent, yeah. if that is left on, it will just fail, it'll just right. shut it off. Right. So go up, make sure that is off if you're trying yeah. to use it on gas. Right. And the other thing maybe it could be air in the system. Okay. Most people tend to run on electric. Yeah. Okay, because yeah. that heat there was from electric. Yeah. Okay, so most people will run on electric, they pay for the pitch, electric comes with it. So you use it. You're going to use yeah, it, yeah, you're not going to use your gas. No. Okay, but if you do need to use a gas at some stage, which you, which you may do, um, if you haven't used it on gas for a while, air gets in the system. Yeah. So what you'll need to do is purge that air out. So the only, the only way to do that is just keep switching it on and off. So if it, see if it will attempt to light. If it goes red, switch it off. Give it a few seconds, switch it back on again, it'll be attempt to light it. So it may take two or three attempts. Yeah. But that's all you're doing, switch it on and off, 
Yeah. And it should purge it out. Okay. Difference between heating on electric or gas. This obviously the gas is thermostatically controlled so you can change the temperature. Yeah. On electric it's just thermostatically controlled to 70. Yeah. Okay, so you can't vary that. Okay? Yeah. Happy? Yeah. Sure? Yeah. Looking a bit worried then. No, no. Is it just too much information coming in? Not at all, no. Right. We've, got, we've got it on there. So yeah, that's good. Okay. There are, there are videos on YouTube as well. Mm. Like all the videos. There's a lot of things. If you want to find anything out about caravanning, yeah. there's a hell of a lot of videos on there for for caravanning. Yeah. Right. That's so that's, awesome. that's your water heating. Next one is your fire. So going back up here, if you saw there, I've got space heater. Yeah. So that's your room heater. On That's just the isolator there. Yeah. This one here, then we'll switch it on. So this gives you the, the different elements, like 500,000 or 2,000 watts. Yeah. Okay, so you imagine that's a bit like a free bar fire, so it's lower to higher. Obviously 2,000 is the highest it will be. Okay? Yeah. You've got thermostat control in the center. So yeah. that, that will be heating an element up behind there. Yeah. Okay? You can also operate on gas. Yeah. So this, up, this side here, we've got a little window down here so you can see if it's lit. So if I just turn that to start with, yeah. hear the ticking, yeah. that's that's ready to ignite. All you do is just press that down to release the gas. Ticking goes off, it should be lit. You should be able to see at a certain angle down there, Flying. there's a blue yeah, light, uh, see, yeah. blue flame. Yeah. Yeah. So turn that round to whichever heating you want. The, the narrow bit is the one you're pointing it at. Yeah. Okay. And turn it off, just bring it back around to the zero. Right. Okay. Uh, the gas side it is more efficient. But once you've heated it up on electric, which may take a little bit longer, because of the insulation of these vans, it does tend to hold the, the warmth quite well, especially yeah. in a smaller van like this. Yeah. Okay, this side is your free fan. Yeah. Okay, you, it will work on either of the energies. So it, this is independent of them, them two, but it, it's always best to use some kind of fan when you're uh, obviously got the heater on because it will be blowing it out the vents. Yeah, yeah. In the bathroom as well. Okay, so the centre's off. To the right is automatic, so that's thermostatically controlled, so it'll go up and down with the heat. Yeah. Or manual, yeah. which is that side. You can just turn it up and down there. You can use it without any heat whatsoever as well, which is running out as it is running now. Yeah. So that will just circulate the air. Obviously yeah. the hotter day. It won't cool it down, just uh, gives you a bit, bit, of, a bit of air movement. Yeah. Okay. Right. Happy with that bit? Yeah. Good. All right, other things we've got is your fridge. Okay, so that's the on off button there. So all you do is just press and hold that switches it on and off. Okay, it is operating on gas at the moment. If I press any button, it will just light the screen up. So there you can see we've got a, a flame there, that's to show it's on gas. Press that left left hand button, that changes the energy, so it's now running on electric. Ah, oh, so it runs on both then? Yeah. Gas on electric. Yeah, so gas, gas on electric, yeah. Same with most things in, in caravans. And also, it, it will also run on 12 volts, which is coming from your car, as long as that is connected to your, um, yeah. to your electrics. So that will only operate when your car is connected and the engine's running. So it will mm. supply a feed to that fridge. Yeah. So you don't need the, this control panel on. Mm. All you need to do is just switch this on to that. Yeah. You see now it's got a flashing light and there's a spanner there. Yeah. That's just to say that the energy is not connected that it wants to run on. Mm. Okay. It can do that on the electric, it can do that on the gas as well. If it's doing it on the gas, that means the gas hasn't lit. Right. Okay. So what you do is switch it off, give it similar to your boiler, switch it off. Give it a few, few seconds, check the usual things, you have got gas and you have turned it on. Then you just give it a few seconds then switch it back on again, it should re-attempt to light. Okay. Again, if you tend to use it on electric, which most people do, you can have end up with air in the system. You just take two or three attempts to uh, switch it on yeah. and off to get it to light. Okay, just yeah. going back to the 12 volts. When you're traveling with, the, with it on 12 volts, it will not cool the fridge down. It will just maintain the temperature. Yeah. So if you've got it at home, if you can plug it in at home and cool the fridge down, say 24 hours before you go, then obviously you can switch to that and then it'll keep it cool as you're traveling. Yeah. Okay, if you if you can't and you, if you've got it stored in a storage uh, compound, obviously you can't connect it to anything, so you're not going to be able to cool it down before you go. What you could do is have, uh, well, my wife tends to freeze chili, she makes a load of chili, freezes it, puts it in, it's like an ice block. So it's defrosting the ice, the, the, uh, the chili as we're going along, but it's keeping the fridge cool enough just to, Say have I don't know, milk or bacon or whatever you want just for the first meal or for the yeah first breakfast. Okay. Right. This side of it, I'll just put it on electric. This side of it is your temperature range. Okay, which is this button here. All five lit. That's the coldest fridge you're going to be. So we just keep pressing that. It just goes round and round and round. 
Okay, so if it's coming out frozen butter, then obviously it's too cold. Two or three is about average, depending on the temperature. Obviously, if you're going to south, south of France, then obviously it's going to need to work harder. Mm. Likelihood it's not going to need to work too hard in this country, but you can always... You, can you always never hope. know, do you? You can always hope. Okay, happy with that? Yep. Yeah. Good. Right, microwave. Well, the door, door handle opens it. Do, do not travel with that in there, because if that drops on here, or that, it's going to be an expensive mess. So I'll just sneak it under there, or we normally do, or my wife tends to put it in a tea towel in the bowl so it stops it rattling. Okay, to operate it, press the power button once. It gives you a percentage 100%, or if you want a different percentage, you press it again, so 80%, 50%. It tends to be 100% most of the time. And all you're doing, turn, turn the control then, and that gives you seconds. Start where it goes. So also got quick start on the start button. 30 seconds, then it will automatically start. Okay? Yeah. Happy with that? Yeah. Don't ask me why it has to be so complicated, just turn that and go. Yeah. I think if you just turn it and go on this one, it's a menu. Yeah, an auto menu. Mm. Which could be anything. Okay? Yeah. Right, cooker. 12 volt igniter there, so we don't need matches. Okay, it has also got a safety device on the lid. So if you haven't pushed it all the way back, it won't, it won't light. Okay, obviously it's lit at the moment. If I just do this, which you normally wouldn't do. So that's got a safety switch in there. So if it's not lighting, just make sure it's pushed all the way back. Yeah. And obviously don't put it down when it is hot, because it's <laughs> likely a bit shattering. Okay. Grill. Okay. Yeah. Grill pan, handles inside there. Oven, same again. Okay. Yeah. Right, just inside here, apart from your um, choppy board and your, your drainer, is the, the gas tap, individual appliance gas taps on that left hand side. Yeah. See them? Yeah. You don't need to turn them on and off. No. Obviously, the main one is on top of your cylinder, so always make sure you turn that off when you're traveling. Okay? There is an info note there to say which ones they are, but yeah. you don't need to turn them on and off. Right. It's mainly for the uh, lads in the service. So if you get it back from service and something's not operating, just check in there just yeah. to make sure they have switched it back on again. Okay. Yep. Right, bathroom. Right, your toilet is electric flush. So that's working off 12 volt. So most of the time you hear that noise, that's when it's empty. Yeah. Okay, that's your flush tank. That indicator light there, that's for your waste tank. Yep. So if that lights up, that means the waste tank's full. Normally you can tell by looking through the gate, gate anyway. Hello. Hello. Hey. Hello. Sorry to bother you. Is there any chance you could move your jag cord? Well, my jag. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be so lucky. So yeah. I will try and get the van out of behind that one. Behind All right. One. Yeah. So your toilet. This is your waste gate down here. If you see that? We're talking about it. If you pull your trying to pull your waste cassette out, if that is slightly open or fully open, it's not going to allow it to come out. So it's got to be shut for it to pull that out. Okay. So to use it, obviously open it, use it. Flush it and shut it afterwards. Okay, it does swivel, so I don't think it's uh, breaking if, or you're falling or you think you're falling off. But it is there. Obviously, they're quite clever. These things that they can put them in any any space, and you can just move them around so you've got space to put your legs. Yeah. Okay, wardrobe. Is it TV aerial here? Yes. So your TV aerial is a directional aerial. Okay. And see the info note here to say which way the red spot which is denotes the front of the antenna. To use it, just slacken that off. So this is your aerial up here. This is your directional aerial. Yeah. So what you'll do is have a look, see where everybody else is pointing their aerial. Then all you need to do is slide it up. And you can turn it if you need to, then lock it off. You can change the top of the top angle as well by yeah. using this little control here, which is yeah. just spin it up or down. So you can bring it horizontal or vertical, whichever way you want it. Again, have a look, see where everyone else is pointing theirs. Make sure you do bring it down before you travel. Yeah. You don't want to be collecting any trees on the way home. <laughs> Definitely not. Um, this side of it is your amplifier. Yeah. Okay, so you need to, that switched on if you want to try and get a signal. The on R switch is just above the V there. Yeah. Okay, depending on where you are, so if you're in the valleys in Wales, the likelihood of picking a signal up is obviously remote. 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 <laughs> it all depends where you are. Now, obviously, it's not bad here because we've got the reeking just above there. Yeah. Okay. Light switch for your bathroom. That one there. Table storage. See that it's got a, a press stud strap. Yeah. Make sure that is clipped on before you travel. If that starts rattling around here, 
going to cut up. That's going to cause some expensive mess as well. The shower 